Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, we give you a very warm welcome to church this morning, and anyone who may be visiting, especially, give you a warm welcome, and anyone perhaps watching online, we trust that you'll know God's blessing as we're here to worship him this morning. And as we come to worship, just a few words from the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 4, and uh, here the writer of the Hebrews says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And further in verse 12, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, and it penetrates to the dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Therefore, Since we have such a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith that we profess, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, and yet without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We're going to worship God as we think of the resurrection in our first hymn, and we're going to sing the resurrection hymn, See What a Morning, uh, Gloriously Bright. And let's stand as we worship God together. Amen. Uh, Sometimes we sing that Easter Sunday morning, and it's always good to remind ourselves that Christ is risen, and he is the ruling, reigning Savior over all. So let's come as we pray and we seek the Lord again together uh, this morning. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the joy and the privilege we have of coming to this house to worship you and to praise you and to acknowledge that you are the Lord God. And we thank you again, all of creation, Lord, declares your glory. Your word declares your glory, but particularly in Christ, you declare your glory, the one who was full of grace and truth. 
And Lord, we come and we thank you that you are the Lord God of heaven and earth. And there's none beside you, a holy and a mighty God. Lord, we thank you indeed for that word, the scripture that are able to make us wise unto salvation, that you reveal yourself particularly through the word of God. And Lord, it is that sharp double-edged sword. It penetrates our souls and into the joints and the marrows like nothing else in all the world can, O God. We know that man cannot cause an anxious thought. But Lord, you, through your word and the, the mighty working of the Holy Spirit, O God, you cause us to see our sin, O God. You cause us, Lord, to uh, come to that place of repentance again. And Lord, you come to show us more of Christ. We know Jesus is the living word, the one who was with you from the beginning and who came into this world to save us from our sin. And Lord, all things are uncovered and laid before him, the one with whom we have to do. And so as we consider it all, Lord, the weight of our sin and the coming judgment of our God, we thank you for a high priest who is risen, that Christ died, but indeed, as we have sang, that uh, Jesus Christ is alive today. And Lord, Lord, we thank you for a living Saviour, one who is in heaven, one, Lord, who uh, continues as our great high priest, one who sympathizes with us in our weakness. Lord, we are weak. Lord, we stumble, we fall, but you are mighty. You are the Saviour of all grace and all mercy. And Lord, we come to that mercy seat, Lord. The cross is empty and, and the invitation is to come. And the prayers of the Son of God continue for, for us in heaven, even this morning and this day and forevermore, that we might receive this mercy, that it might not just be abstract, but it might be a real, Lord, in our lives this morning. We need mercy, O God. We might find grace. We might find help, O God, in life in our time of need, for we're always in need of your grace every day. And yet we thank you, your grace triumphs over our sin and the blood of Christ cleanses us from every dark stain. So Lord, our only righteousness is Christ and our only boast is him. We will not boast in anything but Christ alone and his uh, death and resurrection is coming again. So bless our time, we pray humbly this morning. Speak through your word. And Lord, again, teach us more uh, from you and in the way of Christ and encourage us along the way. And we will give you the praise, the honor, the glory again in Jesus' holy, precious and lovely name. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn again, please, the same psalm we were in last Sunday, Psalm 106. And I uh, just want to revisit it's such a, a, a longer psalm and uh, impossible to cover everything really with one sermon. You could have many sermons, but just for a final time in the psalms uh, over the summer, just to come back to this particular psalm. And then God willing, into September, we'll be beginning a new series in the book of Romans. And we trust that the Lord will continue to bless the preaching of his word to us as we continue uh, week on week. So let's read again Psalm 106. And this is the word of God. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise? Blessed are they who maintain justice, who constantly do what is right. Remember, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance in giving praise. We have sinned even as our fathers did. We have done wrong and acted wickedly. When our fathers were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses, but they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. Yet he saved them for his name's sake, to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea and it dried up and he led them through the depths as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of the foe, from the hand of the enemy, he redeemed them. The waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them survived. Then they believed his promises and sang his praise, but they soon forgot what he had done. They did not wait for his counsel. In the desert they gave in to their craving, in the wasteland they put God to the test. 
So he gave them what they asked for, but he sent a wasting disease or a leanness to their soul. In the camp, they grew envious of Moses and Aaron, who consecrated to, to the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan and buried the company of Ibrahim. Fire blazed among their followers, a flame consumed the wicked. At Horeb, they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glory for the image of a bull which eats grass. They forgot the God who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt, miracles in the land of Ham and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said that he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. Then they despised the pleasant land and did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents and they did not obey the Lord. So he swore to them with uplifted hand that he would make them fall in the desert, make their descendants fall among the nations and scatter them throughout the lands. They yoked themselves to Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. They provoked the Lord to anger by their wicked deeds and a plague broke out among them. But Phineas stood up and intervened and the plague was checked. This was credited to him as righteousness for endless generations to come. By the waters of Meribah they angered the Lord, and trouble came to Moses because of them. For they rebelled against the Spirit of God, and rash words came from Moses' lips. They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded them, but they mingled with the nations and adopted their customs. They worshipped their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. They shed innocent blood and the blood of their sons and daughters whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan and the land was desecrated by their blood. They defiled themselves by what they did and by their deeds they prostituted themselves. Therefore the Lord was angry with his people and abhorred his inheritance. He handed them over to the nations and their foes ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them and subjected them to their power. Many times he delivered them, but they were bent on rebellion and they wasted away in their sin. But he took notice of their distress when he heard their cry. And for their sake, he remembered his covenant. And out of his great love, he relented. He caused them to be pitied by all who held them captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray the Lord will bless the reading of his word to us again this morning. Okay, I'm just going to speak again from here. There's a couple of boys and girls with us, and good to see you along this morning, boys and girls. And uh, just a a wee thought here. Maybe a picture's going to go up uh, onto the screen. What's the sport here? That's an easy one. All right, Caitlin. Football, all right. Okay, so uh, there's one boy here, anyway, and there's a couple of girls. So football, okay. Uh, While we were uh, away before, I heard a little story or an illustration of a game of football. Um, Whenever uh, our boys were younger, before sort of rugby took over, uh, they went along to to football every week and they went along to Myola down in Castle Dawson and uh, there they were trained every, every week. The next wee picture just shows a wee bit of some of the drills that footballers do and again, maybe boys and girls today, of course, Uh, are involved in football and uh, the story goes that on one particular occasion as the children turned up for their football practice the the coach wasn't to be seen and uh, one of the parents decided well I'll have a go here he wasn't just too sure about all the rules of football but he thought look these boys and girls are here and uh, we'll, we'll have a go. There was no sort of line set up and, and the proper goals weren't put in place and the game started. And uh, the next picture just shows what happened as the game went on. As the, the parents tried to, to let the game run and there were a few bumps here and there, uh, it descended into chaos 
and uh, there were lots of fights and arguments and, and uh, was the ball out had it gone over the, the jumpers that had been set down for, for goal posts instead of the proper goals and there was uh, all sorts of problems so we question do you think do the boys and girls enjoy the game when it's run by the rules and it has a proper referee and coach or is it better whenever they just are let do themselves what do you think is it more enjoyable when you have a coach there and a referee or is it just better you can do whatever you want what do you think well you, you know the answer it's better more enjoyable if you have the coach there or the referee and you have the right uh, equipment and you have the rules that are there everybody enjoys the game the last picture shows a game that's been well run and uh, the, the teams are in their colors and there's uh, enjoyment for, for all. And just a little illustration for us, boys and girls, is that God in his word has laid down uh, rules for life, for the best life, and he's given us instructions. We talked to you before for many weeks about God's Ten Commandments, and God has given them for our good. And we all feel them, don't we, at times because of our sin. And when we let sin rule in our lives, it's like the football game. And when we don't listen to God or we don't live according to what the Bible tells us, our lives become chaos. And we see that in the world. Sadly, so many have turned away from God's word and they try and work out life for themselves. But it ends up in chaos. And people are not happy. They're not content Although they say no to God and they want to go their own way, it's like the football match without the referee or without the coach. There's so much chaos and people are so sad and they're hurt. The football game boys were hurt when they played and people are hurt as spiritually when they don't put God first or live according to the Bible. But the positive then, that God calls us back to himself and the, the first commandment we're, we're to remember the Lord God is number one. When we put him first and with his help we, we seek to live by what he tells us in the Bible, well then that gives us enjoyment in life and God leads us and helps us and when we live by what the Bible tells us there's a joy, there's a peace, there's a contentment and it's not easy you think of a football match as the match goes on the players get tired and and sometimes we get tired as we get a little bit older or we're in the christian race for a while but god is good and he helps us to continue and you sometimes in the match there's a substitute that's needed isn't there and the substitute comes on and the other player maybe that's injured goes off and we have a great substitute don't we jesus and Jesus came into this world and he came to live amongst us and he came ultimately we know to die to become our substitute for sin and so it's through Jesus that God calls us to himself and when we just come and fully trust in him and rely on him he guides us and he helps us and then we want to live according to the Bible that was my life boys and girls for 19 years I lived for myself but when God saved me this book became a delight and the more we grow in God, how sweet this book is. And, and God's word is like honey for us. And it's sweet to our taste. And we love God's word. And we love the Lord Jesus Christ. And although at times the going can be hard, but God helps us. And he will take us through by his grace to the end. So I just hope you remember that little illustration. And that we will put God first and seek to live according to the Bible. And that we will know God's help and strength as we look to Jesus through it all. We're going to sing a little uh, children's hymn. Or for all of us, it's really not a children's hymn, but great words. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We're going to sing just three verses of the hymn. And we'll stand again as we praise God. And this takes us of course to the the blood of Jesus on the cross and how he can renew us and forgive us through what he has done for us. Let's stand again then as we praise God.
Well, just a few announcements at this stage. Uh, again, uh, everyone's welcome for a cup of tea afterwards. And I know there's some home baked scones that might entice you to stay for a cup of tea and a scone. And we've had some lovely times of fellowship. So please don't be in a rush away. Just go around the hall after the service there and have a little chat. And it's important we have fellowship together. And we invite everyone to come for a cup of tea uh, after the service this morning. Uh, the evening service is over in Liss McCarroll, so just remember if you're free tonight, if you can go over to Liss McCarroll there, and the park and ride services continue uh, tonight. I think that's still at 8 o'clock, does anybody know? Sometimes it gets a wee bit earlier as the time goes on, but up to now it's been at 8, so if you're free tonight, go along there to Liss McCarroll, and I'm sure you'll be blessed there. Uh, community prayer time on Thursday, and if you're free on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, and uh, there's that prayer time, it's the last Thursday of the month, hard to believe we're at that stage again in August, but they do come along, you're, you're welcome to come Thursday at 10 o'clock, and then Friday morning, a little bit earlier, at half past 7, uh, again, that little prayer time can continues in the crash room there and you're welcome to join others there. Uh, next Sunday service, 11 a.m., Dennis Bannerman will be along, God willing, to preach God's word. I have a final sort of reading week in preparation for September and the work ahead uh, during this week. So Dennis, again, will be covering the pastoral needs here and preaching God's word next Sunday. And again, we encourage you to continue to come uh, each Sunday and next Sunday again. Uh, there's the Gay Pride Gospel Outreach, which is on Saturday. Uh, this Saturday, the, the parade there in uh, London Derry. And uh, you're invited to come along. There's a little outreach there, and that's between 12 o'clock and 3. And uh, that's at the Guild Hall there. And if you can go along there any time between 12 and 3, um, there will be those who will be sharing God's word on the love of Christ uh, with those who pass by. And please pray for the outreach. And if you can get along there Saturday, 12 to 3, uh, that will be such an encouragement to those who are going to be there in their witness for Christ. A uh, session note, there'll be a session meeting Tuesday the 30th of August at 6.30, and we just make that announcement for Tuesday week. And then into the first uh, weekend of September, there's the notice again, just please remember the fun day we're having on the Saturday. We're having different inflatables and barbecue, hopefully ice cream van and face painting and all sorts for boys and girls in the community, and I uh, do pray that that'll be a blessing. And we would need helpers for that. And if you can help, please, I'd ask if you can stay behind just for a few moments at the end of the service. And we just want to uh, meet very quickly just to see who's available and uh, maybe get a few jobs. We need people to cover the different uh, activities going on on the day. Maybe serve a cup of tea. And we have the Faith Mission truck coming, as you see there. And there'll be tea and coffee and literature going out there through that afternoon. So really pray for that. Invite people to come. And we uh, we pray that uh, others will get involved and stay if you can just for that help. We need new leaders for the Boys Brigade and I uh, do continue to pray for the organisations as they uh, get on. There's a leader, Max, going to come and help us, good man. All right. And we need leaders, so we do, for boys like Max. He'll soon be in the Boys Brigade and we need those who will lead them and shepherd them. And uh, we pray that the Lord will, will uh, put that burden on your heart, perhaps. And if you can help out, please speak to me and uh, just about that service of Christ into the future, please. And then Sunday school recommences, just a reminder, on the uh, uh, 11th of September with the family service on the 4th and then Sunday school begins again on the 11th of September and our evening services again into September. I think that's all just to highlight by way of announcement and again there is the opportunity if, if any need to go out with their younger children please that's there and if you want to stay in that's fine too and just you do whatever suits no problem at all. We're going to lift an offering now. Your offering for the Lord's work is going to be received and we're going to sing together A Mighty Fortress is Our God based on Psalm 46 the great hymn of Martin Luther and wonderful words here. Let's think of them as we sing them and as we give to God and we'll keep our seats for the first couple of verses and then we'll stand for the final two verses, please. Let us praise God together.
that's a powerful hymn. And you can think of Martin Luther in his day, the day of Reformation, and uh, way back in the 1500s as uh, God saved him, and he began that work of Reformation, and the Word of God became uh, prominent and prevalent uh, through uh, the continent of Europe again, and many souls were brought to the kingdom, and the great battle against Satan and against Christ and his kingdom was raging, and yet the Lord prevailed. And God still prevails, the battle still continues, and it's just a glorious hymn, and so much of Christ there and his help for his people through uh, the, the battle. So we thank God for, for that old hymn, but yet the, the freshness it brings to our spirit as we use it to assure our faith and trust in the Lord. We're going to pray just now, and uh, recently I was reading the Asia Link magazine, and the focus of the latest magazine is on the country of Iran. And uh, we're called there to pray for Iran and uh, just to use that as a focus. And the first little article just speaks of the revolution in Iran, 1979. Uh, the hardline Islamic regime came into power and Christians were greatly persecuted at that time. And many missionaries were kicked out of Iran. Uh, Bibles in the Persian language were banned and many church leaders and pastors were imprisoned and indeed martyred, as we sang there of that last hymn, the, those who have been martyred, killed for their faith. And uh, that was a time of great persecution. But in the 1990s, many of the population of Iran uh, became and indeed are still disillusioned with the regime that's in power now. And so many started to turn back to seek the Lord. And God started to work in an underground way in the Church of Christ in Iran. And that church continues to grow. It's not above ground. It meets in secret. But today, the church in Iran is the fastest growing church in the world. So that's an amazing uh, fact of God's grace. And many eyes, this little article says, People's eyes are being opened away from the false hope of Islam and to the eternal life found in Christ. And God's word is going into Iran through various means. And the prayer is that God will raise up godly leaders and that the, 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 the church in Iran will be taught freely like we are taught openly from God's word and that he will prevail. It's a country of 86 million people. It's a vast land, and there's only 0.5% of the population are evangelical Christian people. And so it's such a vast country. There are many, many people groups in Iran, and uh, there are all sorts of people groups, the Azeri, the Gilaki, the Mazandarian, the Persian, the Manasi, the Southern Kurds, the Pakistanis, and they need our prayers and that God would work. And uh, there are also those who are being persecuted in the land of Iran. And uh, one girl just to pray for is a Sep Ida, and she was persecuted for not wearing her hijab. And we need to pray for those who are persecuted, who are being tortured in prison. And this is the reality for uh, those in Iran today. But God is in control. It's the fastest growing church and he is working in these areas of persecution. And let's pray for this nation and for the various needs there as we also remember our own community and the great need we see here around us. And let us pray together. Father, we thank you that we can pray for others, O oh God. Again, remembering the sick and the bereaved of recent days and weeks for your continued grace. Lord, we thank you for what you are doing in your world. And today, Lord, we just pause to pray for the great nation of Iran. Lord, we know that the devil holds many people through this hardline Islamic regime and so much of a false hope of this Islam. And yet, Lord, we thank you for your people in Iran. Lord, we thank you for the hunger there is growing for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for the underground church. And indeed, it's a growing church and that, Lord, the gates of hell will not prevail 
prevail against your church in this great nation. And we pray for all the many people groups in Iran and this vast province, O God. And we pray that you will raise up godly men to teach the word of God, that your people will be built up in their faith that many will be saved, O God. We thank you for those that you are saving, and we praise you for what you are doing in this nation. And yet, Lord, we know many are being persecuted, O God. Lord, we think of this girl, Sepita, and Lord, we think of her in prison and being tortured, O God. And we pray, Lord, for those who are being tortured, and Lord, some perhaps who need the light of the hope of the gospel, and even these hardline uh, prison officers and those who torture these uh, dear people, O God, that they will be convicted of their sin and they themselves will be turned to Christ. Lord, we think of the Roman soldiers as they tortured the Son of God. And there was one who said, surely this is the Son of God. And we pray for this Islamic leadership that, Lord God, you will work in hearts and lives and turn it around. And we thank you for the work of Asia Link. And we thank you for Aidan and Corey who were with us that go to Muslim lands and, and those who are sharing the good news in these lands and places. So, Lord, we pray. Father, we pray for the ongoing work here in our own community. And we thank you for the summer outreaches that many are now coming to an end. And thank you for those who have been reached and saved by your grace locally. Father, we pray for our community and we pray for our uh, uh, city of Londonderry and, and this uh, gay pride parade as it comes on Saturday. Lord, we pray for the outreach. Lord, we pray some here will be able to go and support that and that, Lord, you will use your word and the love of Christ would be seen and some, Lord, might be convicted of their sin and be brought to a relationship with you and know your saving grace, Lord, even on this particular day. Father, we pray for our schools and pupils who are receiving their results. Some received uh, A-level results and, Lord, they would be seeking your, your way and will ahead. For those that will go to university, Lord, I pray that you will keep them, that they'll not be taken into the world and away from you, Lord, that sadly happens so often. But Lord, they will find fellowships where they will be taught and Christian students will, 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 will be that light and salt and others will come. And Lord, university years will be years of, of great strengthening for, for students, O oh God, that you will bless Christian unions and universities, Lord, over these days and those who who work in them. We pray, O oh God, oh Lord, we ask for McGee and for Corain and for Belfast and right across the land, Lord. We pray that as uh, students and, and communities meet there, that you will bless, Lord, all in education and teachers going back soon and the preparations being made. Oh God, we pray that, Lord, you will bless our schools and our pupils again. Lord, we pray for our own organizations here in church and you know the need, oh God, and particularly the need for for leaders and our boys brigade and the ongoing work of our girls brigade lord and for all that will start again in your will in september lord we pray that you will bless our organizations for those who have served faithfully in the past lord we thank you and lord we pray for the future there'll be mighty days of blessing the outpouring of your spirit even here in this place and lord as your word continues it might be thus and thus saith the lord that you will grant us a mighty revival and Lord, you will save the lost, build up your people. And Lord, that you will just even now open up this word to our souls. And Lord, we ask it all humbly, very humbly, in the name of Christ. And we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Amen. Well, if you have your Bible there, please turn to Psalm 106. And uh, there's a little slide going up just to start us uh, today. And I wonder, as we begin our, our sermon today, what's your favorite walk? Do you have a favorite walk? Um, my favorite walk is uh, down here at Shown. Do you know where the picture is? I'm sure you probably do. Where's it at? Uh, Port Ballantrae. And uh, I think of all the walks, this is my favorite walk. When you walk down Port Ballantrae, you go across the beach and you walk around the headland and where do you come to? The Giant's Causeway. And you walk down to the Giant's Causeway, go right round and you get the beautiful view of the Giant's Causeway from the, the, the top. And then you walk back through the, the golf course and it's six miles. And I think that's my favorite walk. Where's your favorite walk? I wonder. 
we're reminded in the Bible of a a seven mile walk that Jesus took with two on the first Lord's Day evening after that he rose from the dead. You know that story very well, I'm sure. We know in that account in Luke's Gospel that Cleopas and his friend, they were feeling down and dejected as they shared about the apparent death of Christ. And they thought that was it, that it was finished. They hoped that Jesus would be the one to redeem Israel, to bring them back to God. I wonder this morning, are you feeling down and are you feeling dejected? Maybe feeling without hope. But the stranger, of course, that came alongside Cleopas and his friend was Christ himself. And we read in that story of that lovely seven mile walk. And as they walked along, what do you do on a walk if you're walking with somebody? You talk, don't you? You talk about all sorts. And we know Jesus talked with these two. And it says in Luke that beginning with Moses and the prophets in the Old Testament, he explained to them and he said about all that was in the scriptures concerning himself. And what happened when Jesus drew alongside them? It tells us, and it's a beautiful verse, it says their hearts burned within them as Christ walked with them. And isn't it a wonder that this morning as we open up the word of God, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, comes through the power of his Spirit and he walks with us and he talks with us as we open up the Scriptures. And what I would love us to see here is, is, uh, we'll get to it in a a little time, is just this wonderful uh, Christ and how we see Christ in this psalm. And we'll be thinking of that a little bit later as we now come back to Psalm 106. The second slide here just reminds us what we were looking at last week. And I'm not going to go through it all again, but just a very, very quick uh, summary. We were thinking of the national need for God's mercy and the unfaithfulness, sin and rebellion of God's people Israel. And really, there are lots of sins that are lined out. We don't uh, go over them again today. But the main sins that are there are the sins of idolatry and of apostasy and God's people turning away from the Lord. And uh, we read, if you look uh, quickly there, uh, verse 19, uh, it says there in Horeb, they made the golden calf. Uh, verse 20, exchanging their glory for the image of the bull. So there was this great sin uh, that plagued God's people, idolatry, where they built this golden calf. And uh, then uh, look on at uh, verse 25, they grumbled, they did not obey the Lord. And uh, later on, uh, verse 28, it says, they yoked themselves to Baal, this false god, this sort of a God that was represented as a bull and as a man and, and they, they, they yoked themselves. I was just thinking of the sadness of that. You think of, of a yoke of oxen and, and they're yoked together and, and this was God's people. They, 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 they not only sort of slipped up but, but they gave themselves, they came into to, to willing giving of themselves to, to, to this Baal worship. And like I was saying to the boys and the girls in the football match, there was chaos. Sin will take you further than you want to go. Sin will make you stay longer than you want to stay. And it brings great destruction. And very quickly, another slide coming up. Uh, We were thinking of the same situation in our land today. And I mentioned the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games. And there are a couple of extra pictures here. Uh, just to again remind us of what is going on in 2022. I maybe didn't explain it well enough last week, but in the center of those so-called celebrations, there's this bull that is brought in, and there's the bowing down to the bull, and you can see in the bottom picture, there's this sort of, this is a satanic sign of those that were there on that occasion. And this is Baal worship in 2022. And this is of Satan. This is Antichrist. There is no mention of the the previous foundations of our nation in the word of God or of the gospel or or of Christ. 
And uh, I mentioned the uh, closing ceremony, Ozzy Osbourne, the Prince of Darkness. And uh, all the sexualization that goes with Baal worship. And we mentioned about the, the pop industry. And you don't have to go too far to listen to, to lyrics. It's not about love anymore. It's about sex and, and the dress of particularly female artists and the depravity that's there and uh, just there's a there's a there's a worship of Satan that's very prevalent and our young people need to be so careful and we all need to be so careful about what we listen to on the radio as we go along and it's very real and it's there the um, <clears throat> top right picture there is of a of a, a girl and she's going to appease you see in the left the bull has got red angry eyes and then it, the eyes become white and um, she's lifting up light here and in the, in the ceremony there were these crystals lifted up to the bull to appease the bull and again this is just the worship of satan Just look at here in the, in the Bible. What happened in, in this day again as these people gave themselves, yoked themselves to Baal? It says in verse 41, God handed them over to the nations and their false idolatries and their idols. God handed them over. So you've got the worship of Baal, Satanism, very prevalent here. And with that gross sexual immorality, and we see that pervading our land today. And it brought me to mind to Paul in the book of Romans. When we think of the sins of the land, and Paul says of, of men who burn in lust with men, and, and women burning in lust with women, and all that we see going on in our society, and, and the judgment of God, what does it say there? It's a, it's, a, it's a sad verse, really. God gave him up. And, and it says here of the God's people that, yes, God let them, allowed them to, to, to do what they wanted, but he sent a leanness to their soul. And there's a leanness spiritually in our society in 2022. Let's be under no illusions. We are in a pagan land. It's given itself, it's yoked itself to these practices by and large. The next picture again, we reminded ourselves, and we're not going through it in detail again, but of the shedding of innocent blood. In, in, in this day, Molech was the God that the children of Israel can you imagine it? They, they, they brought their children and they sacrificed their babies. You see how Satan comes and, and, and works and, and the grip that he can get on a nation. And we think of uh, the abhorrence today of abortion, which is wrong. It's murder. I was watching lunchtime TV just this week past. And again, there was a, a restaurant owner. And what was the problem? There's no workers. He's having to reduce from seven days to three or four days a week to try and make a living. And there are always consequences for our sin. And again, we're reminded, aren't we, in Scripture that we are in the last days. And Paul reminds us in 1 Timothy 4, in the last days, some will depart the faith and they will devote themselves to deceitful spirit and the teaching of demons. And our nation surely is under the judgment of God. Christ is coming. There's a great battle going on. But God always has the remnant. He has his people. Again, remember Elijah in his day. He thought he was the only one. But God had the 7,000. God has his people. You're here today. To be encouraged to be built up through the word of God in your faith in this great battle. And you know, once you're saved by God and, and you come to know and to love Christ and you can say, I love the Lord, well, that's when the battle really begins. That's when the devil will come 
against you. And some of you are knowing what it is at this time to know the great struggle. Our struggle, Paul says, is not against the, 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 the flesh and the blood, but principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And we see it as we uh, see what's going on in our land. But, but that's the battle for the Christian. But I want us here, as we go on to the next slide, and we really think of this today, is here, let's think again of Psalm 106, of God's mercy in Christ alone. God's steadfastness. Look at it again. Verse 1, let's drink it in. Thanks be to God for his enduring love is forever. And then the, the, uh, <coughs> the, the, the last uh, Verse there, praise be to the Lord God of Israel. Verse 48, from everlasting to everlasting, let all the people say amen. So how is Satan overcome? What is the hope for our nation? Christ, we know, and Christ alone. Listen, or if you have your Bible, look up Revelation chapter 12 there and listen of these words of this war that is described in Revelation chapter 12. Verse 7 says, Now there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels, they fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brothers, that's the devil, has been thrown down. Who accuses them day and night before our God? And they have conquered him by how the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. For they did not love their lives even unto death. Here speaking of the martyrs of the faith. But rejoice, O heavens, and you shall dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down in great wrath. And he knows that his time is short. Just as in the, the picture we showed you of the girl who lifted up the light and here's the, the, the sort of the devil wanting to seem as light as Lucifer. So this speaks of Satan's fall from heaven. And Satan's origin was as the chief or the, 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 um, the um, anointed uh, angel, as it were, in heaven, a chief angel. And it says that pride was found within the heart of, as he was referred to at that time, Lucifer, the bright, the shining one. And Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 says, How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. So, so the, the devil, the, the, the bright, the shining one, falls. Satan comes to the place of hell. And his onslaught begins against mankind. And we read of it right from Genesis chapter 1 as the devil comes in the form of the serpent to Adam to Eve. And the question is asked, has God said? And the devil still works subtly. We have to beware of his work outside but also internally within the church of Christ. And he always wants to undermine the authority of the word of God. That's what's going on in many churches who are defaulting and are bringing in strange doctrines and teachings. It's the authority of the word of God and Satan subtly wants to come in and to weaken that uh, reliance and dependence that we have. Because he knows, here Revelation says, his time is Short. He, in Revelation, is the great deceiver of the nations. In, in the Commonwealth Games ceremony, what happens there is all the nations then, as the, 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 the opening ceremony continued, they all came around this bull. And there's such a ramping up in these days. Revelation, listen to chapter 20. What's the end of the devil? The devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet have been thrown. That is talking of an unholy trinity, the, the, the raising up of, of a false prophet. There's much that is false on a beast, an antichrist. 
And it says they will be tormented day and night forever. That's the devil's end. He knows his time is short. And here's the warning also. It said for those who are unsaved, death and Hades or hell were thrown into the lake of fire. And the lake of fire is the second death. Anyone's name who is not written in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, was thrown into the lake of fire. Here's the warning for the unsaved. The end of those who know not Christ. And so when we think of it and the warfare and the, 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 the strength of the fight that it is in 2022, we can't, cannot overcome the might of the devil in our own strength. We sang there, did we in our own strength confide our striving would be losing? We in our sin nature, we are no match for the demons of hell. Look at the children of Israel. They failed often. We fail often. And the devil comes, Revelation said there, as the accuser of the brethren. At those times when we do fail and we fall in sin, what does Satan do? He comes to accuse us. And so we need to be reminded this morning here of the assured supremacy of Christ over all. It's the last we point on the screen here today. The supremacy of Christ over all. Listen to the words of Luther's hymn again. Lovely words. Drink them in. We're not the right man at our side for the Christian. The man of God's own choosing. Who uh, may that be? Christ Jesus. It is he. The Lord of hosts is his name. From age to age, he's the same. Jesus, the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He must, he will win the battle. His enduring love is forever. His praise and his everlasting presence with his people is assured forever. And I want us to think much and make much of Christ here as we bring all things together to encourage us as God's people. Because Christ is the great deliverer. Again, think of the deliverance in verses 8 there of Psalm 106, the great deliverance through the Red Sea. Verse 8 says, The Lord saved them for his name's sake to make his mighty power known. What a wonderful, miraculous deliverance. Salvation for a nation, the nation of Israel through the Red Sea. But what an infinitely greater, mightier deliverance, not just for one nation, but for the world, for God so loved the world through Christ. His death. Death could not hold him. But the Lord God, through the power of the Spirit, rose Christ from the dead. And that power that rose Christ is available for each and every Christian. And what a freedom God's people must have known when they were delivered from Egypt. And again, what freedom and joy we know in the Lord when we are delivered from the power of Satan and sin and hell through the resurrection. And Colossians says here, I'm quoting from the Living Bible, Colossians 3 says, you were dead in your sins. Sinful desires were not yet cut away. Then God gave you a share in the very life of Christ. Isn't this wonderful? God gives us a share in the life of Christ. He forgave all your sins. He blotted out the charges proved against you. The list of his commandments which you had not obeyed. And, and that there's times the devil wants to, to stir up and, and remind maybe of feelings in the past. But, but, but the Lord here says he takes our sins and he destroys them. He nails them to the cross of Christ. In this way, God took away Satan's power and God openly displayed to the whole world Christ's triumph at the cross. Satan is defeated. Sin is defeated. Death is defeated. Hell is defeated through the resurrection of Christ. That's why Revelation says Satan is conquered through the blood of the Lamb. And there's cleansing power in the blood. How we need to know it daily and the covering of the blood of Christ upon our lives as we go further. 
But not only do we think of Christ and his, his mighty deliverance of his people at the cross and in his resurrection, but look at verse 43. What does it say of the Lord? Many times he delivered them. And I want to say here further, Christ is our many times deliverer. Although we sin and we fail every single day in thought and word and deed, God is so gracious and when we come and we bow and we, we pray and we say, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry for that sin or that wrong attitude, he's the many times deliverer, isn't this mighty? To rest on that we have this great high priest that we come to who is full of grace and full of mercy. And again and again and again we, we get on our face and we bow down and he meets us and he refreshes us. And he lifts us up and he says, you're my child. You're adopted child. And, and, the, and the Lord comes and many times Christ delivers us. As we humbly repent and we come in confession of our sin, he is faithful. He is just. His mercy endures forever. Galatians 2 verse 20, Paul says, The life which I now live in the flesh is by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's where victory is. It's in his love, his power, his purity. As Paul says, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. He is the Lord. He is the many times deliverer. And then further again, he is the great intercessor. As we read there in Hebrews at the beginning of our service, we, we touched on this last week of Moses and how, look at verse 23, that the Lord said he was going to destroy his people. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them? And we know that because Moses interceded there that God relented. Christ, the glorious Son of God, again on that cross of Calvary, much more than Moses, is the one who stands the gap for his people. We know it well, but let's remind ourselves that as Christ was on the cross, he bore the full wrath of God. He took his people's sin on the cross so that we might not have to endure it in hell, in that lake of fire forever. But for those that God saves, he takes us off that broad road and he promises us life and eternal life. And when he saves us, he prays for us. Isn't that lovely again? The Son of God prays for you. And how do we know we're genuinely saved? Well, I would say one thing that we know we're genuinely saved is we want to pray. I know many people say, well, I say my prayers. But it's not just a saying of the prayers, but it's a, it's a new relationship. Again, I remember when God saved me that night on the 10th of May, 1994, for the first time ever, I knew, oh, I knew, oh, I knew that I was in a new relationship with the Heavenly Father. There was no longer this barrier of sin and, and the joy and the wonder of prayer. And, and you know that you're saved when you have a burden for other people. You want others to be saved. And, and, and there's that great O oh, in our prayers. Romans chapter 8. We'll come to it in more detail, God willing, in the future. Paul speaking there of an inward groaning of God's people. Talking about a groaning world. The world is groaning. It's bursting at its seams because Christ is coming. And we groan inwardly as God's people. We're waiting in a way for the heavenly adoption, for the glorification. Because this old world at times is hard and it's tough and, and there are many struggles. But, 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 but we groan within and, and we struggle in prayer, don't we? Often we're like the disciples and, and on our own we fall asleep and we struggle. But you know, far much more than we agonize in prayer is the Spirit of God who knows our weakness. And listen to this verse again in Romans 8, 26. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit intercedes with groanings too deep for words. 
Knowing the strength of sin and the opposition of, of Satan, the Holy Spirit groans for God's people's final deliverance from sin into glory. And oh, that we would only get a, a picture again and an eye shot of heaven and, and the greater glory. Think of Stephen, the first martyr, and, and as the stones came hurling into him and he died for the faith, his face shone as an angel for he saw Christ. And Christ gets up off his seat and hears Christ, the one who is seated on his throne. He stands and Stephen, he, he looks down and, and he reaches him and oh, that we would get a picture of the greater glory of heaven and eternity. And it would encourage us and it would help us and it would give us a backbone again to stand up, stand up for Jesus in our putrid society today. And, and the Spirit of God groans. You see, I would say again the importance of prayer. The importance of the prayer meeting. Now, I don't want to chastise or say as our prayer meetings and midweeks begin again in September, but there's such a need for us to really pray, to come together. And as we come together in prayer, my my experience as a young Christian from 19 and through my 20s and then into my 30s of going to prayer meetings, some of those were in houses with a couple of people, some of those were in faith mission prayer unions, some of those were in larger gatherings at conferences, some of those were at the church in Castle Dawson where every week there's the priority of prayer. You see, God hears and answers prayer. You read the book of Acts, the 120 come together. Miracles happen as God's people pray. Whenever Peter, remember Peter was in prison, what were the, the people doing? Uh, Rhoda, that lovely story of the servant girl, what were they doing? They were in a prayer meeting. And, and God delivers Peter supernaturally and, and the angel comes and, and, and the, the doors are opened and God is working and, and Peter comes and, and he walks along and he knocks the door of the, and, and Rhoda comes and says... And he, she runs back and says, Peter's at the door, and they don't believe her. No, no, no. God answers prayer. The best thing, the, 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 the priority for us, if we want to know, surely the blessing of God is the prayer meeting. There's opportunities coming on Wednesday evening, on Thursday morning, on Friday morning. Plenty of opportunities for you to come. And your heart will be warmed. Your burden for the lost will be increased. And you will be blessed. And let's continue to feed on this word every day, every week as we come. Soon our evening services will begin, morning and evening on the Lord's Day. And as the scripture says, let us submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let's submit our wills fully to Christ again this morning. Let's give ourselves afresh to the service of Christ as we go into September. That you might be his hands and his feet. That might be at home or in your school or that might be in your university or that might be here in church. There are gaps, there are need for leaders. And let's remind ourselves the grace of God triumphs our sin, that Christ is the head of his church. He is supreme over all. And in this psalm again, at the end, all the praises to the Lord. As the people cry, save us, bring us back, O God. May the Lord be working in your hearts and lives, maybe in a bringing back to himself, in a fresh service of Christ. That again, as you consider Christ and his death and his resurrection, you afresh give yourselves to the work and the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. For this life we know is short. The devil's time is short. Our time is short. But oh, there's a great God and an eternity to, 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 to work for his glory. And the final victory is assured. Christ is the ruling, reigning one. And he will have all the praise and all the honor and all the blessing. And the glory will be his, both now and forevermore. What is man's chief end but to enjoy God and to glorify God and enjoy him forever? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. What a great God, what a gracious Savior. And may we go forward in the service of Christ 
And may you know the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit until the Lord Jesus comes or calls. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your holy word and the instruction of it, O God. And oh Lord, we thank you for all that is ours in Christ. And may we rest in him. Lord, we thank you that you call us and you adopt us as your children into your family. And Lord, one day you will glorify us. And Lord, now is the time of the battle. Now is the time of the fight. Lord, sadly, there are those who have come away from that, Lord, or perhaps through the uh, deceitfulness of this old world, hearts are cold. But Lord, we thank you that you're the God who rekindles and who redeems and who brings us back. You are the many times deliverer, and your grace and your love and your mercy, they triumph over the hardness of our old hearts. And so have your way. May the power of the Spirit of God flow freely from this place and through this community in these days. May many be coming to Christ, daily adding you, Lord, add those daily who should be saved. And not just here, but right through the nations of the world until that final day of consummation when Christ will come again. The devil will be thrown into that lake of fire forever. And Lord, your people will rejoice evermore. Praise the Lord, O my soul. We give him the praise, the honour, the glory. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence and your word to us this day. And we ask it and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing then as we close, please. And again, remember, if you can, stay for that little cup of tea and fellowship. And if you want a a little chat, uh, we're here to help. And we'll sing again uh, in Christ alone. My hope is found. Let's stand to praise God. May the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be your portion this day and indeed forevermore. 
until that day and that time that you do call or come, Lord Jesus, may he have the preeminence, the praise, the honour and the glory as we pray in his high and holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 